Hello and welcome to another Self PubCon 2019 session. I'm Bonnie Wagner Stafford. I'm Allies Communications Manager, and this session is all about finding new ways to market your book. There are obviously the standard ways. Um, there is your mailing list. There are, you know, Facebook ads. So we're just going to take a little bit of a turn on our head and. Um, I think that this is going to be something a little bit different um, for you and a different way to think about your book, what the content is, um, and perhaps give you some ideas for new things that you could do to market your book that you might not have thought of before. So in this uh, session today, we're going to talk a little bit about promotion versus marketing. We're going to spend a fair bit of time talking about market and environment and your market scan. We're going to talk about the fact that uh, this is um, this is about more than who your readers are, though knowing who your readers are is obviously key. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into why readers will want to buy your book, and then uh, we'll wrap it up with what you're really selling. I see my picture is over the contents bar there, but you get the idea. So a little bit about me before we uh, go into this. Um, that's uh, my husband and myself on the deck of our sailboat Ingenium, um, where we have lived for the past four years. We've been traveling around this last year off the boat. Um, so I'm not on the boat at the moment, but uh, we'll be back there uh, in November. But uh, we made a decision uh, four years ago that uh, the um, urban rat race and the corporate uh, culture was not for us anymore, that we wanted to do something different, more meaningful, more authentic for us, let our creative selves uh, go, hence the name Ingenium, which is Latin for creative thinking or creative minds. Um, and, but this was not a vacation. People often think uh, living on a sailboat, oh, that must be so nice and relaxing. Well, it, there are moments of relaxation, but uh, first of all, we were working full time. I was working with authors editing their books. We launched our business in Genium Books Author Services Company, which is a partner member of Ally, while on the boat. And from the boat, we have a device on the back that lets us pick up cell signals up to 20 miles offshore, nautical miles offshore. So, um, so that's that part of it. We the the middle photo is uh, our mascot, our cat Moko, who travels everywhere with us. He's just a amazing cat. He goes in the car, he flies to France, he flies, you know, he's been on umpteen planes, he's on our boat. And of course, when I'm trying to work, he likes to plop himself right on top of the manuscript. Um, uh, what we're talking about today is, uh, is a section um, included in One Million Readers, which is a book that uh, I published this year, The Definitive Guide to a Nonfiction Book Marketing Strategy that Saves Time, Money, and Sells More Books. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this nonfiction business. Um, so I wanted to declare right up front with this book that my examples uh, in the book and my bent is nonfiction. I do firmly believe that the components um, in the book, excuse me, are uh, totally relevant to fiction as well. I've heard from several readers who are fiction authors as well as nonfiction authors, but the fiction authors in particular, who've said that it's it's relevant uh, and that it that it helps them. So, if you're worried that this is going to be too specifically nonfiction for you, um, I ask you to just give it a little bit and and think about how this applies to your book. Um, another little bit about me and why why nonfiction. So I I focus I write nonfiction. I have a work in progress that is kind of a hit based on true history, but is 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 a fictional uh, depiction. Um, but I just want to give you a little window into why. So if I'm a former journalist. Uh, I won some awards for my for my work uh, in Canada. And then I went on to work in corporate communications in the Ontario government. Ontario is a province in Canada. Many of you will know that. Many of you might not, but uh, in, in the ministries of finance and tourism and culture and revenue and all those fun uh, fun things. But before that, there was kind of a pivotal event in my childhood. You know how writers and authors, we 
all develop a love of reading and, and writing fairly early on. Uh, most of the time, obviously, we can't generalize. But uh, when I was in grade five, we had a writing assignment um, in class, and I was so excited. We were we were supposed to go and create a a story that that we loved and and write it and present it in class. And uh, this was just right up my alley. I was I was right into this and I was a big fan of the Nancy Drew series uh, back then as a kid and um, I took the Nancy Drew characters and then wrote my ho a whole new mystery I was I was so into it and I was so proud of it and I was having so much fun and I brought the story into class and um, <laughs> I got a failing mark because I was supposed to make up the characters too. Now, when I got the assignment, I just immediately went into, I wanted to do a Nancy Drew story because that was what I could relate to. So it really burst my bubble because I thought it was a really good story. Everything else was totally mine, but I used characters that were already there. And I think that's partly, I think that's at the root of why I've been scared off, non, off fiction. Uh, so anyway. You might be wondering why I'm spending so much time talking about me, letting you have a little bit of a window into me and who I am, and this will become clear a little later in the presentation. Okay, so now that you know who I am, um, we are going to be talking about not all of these areas of a marketing strategy. These, This is what I cover in One Million Readers in the book, um, but we are going to be focusing on, you know, and I totally totally think you should buy and read the book and in fact there's a giveaway uh, one lucky person will get a physical copy of the book from me and I will also be giving away five free ebooks um, at this after this session so you have to tweet about it and you know do your qualification whatever the wonderful Sasha has determined uh, that you need to do to qualify to to be eligible for one of those free gifts so in one million readers I go through each of these sections and I talk about each of these elements in detail but what we're gonna focus on today is really the market scan element and that is that is where you're gonna find nuggets with some of the other ideas that's why it's in the first section of a marketing strategy because it really is is key we're also gonna to touch a little bit on target audience but not in the traditional sense uh, one million readers does go through in the traditional sense of how to identify your your reader we provide I provide you know step-by-step -step questions you can ask and we're gonna to touch a little bit on unique selling proposition as well today but not again with a little bit of a twist so we're we're really spending our time today in that market scan area now before we go um, into it I just want to also talk about the difference between marketing and promotion so and and this is important because uh, many people don't really understand the distinction and it you, you really want to get it straight in your head because your marketing activities are going to be um, different from your promotion activities so I think of you know marketing is the big umbrella and promotion is one of the things that hangs from that umbrella but um, but you can't, it doesn't turn the other way around. It, marketing isn't a subset of, of promotion, it's the other way around. So, marketing is everything you do um, and everything related to you as an author and your book or books. It is laying the groundwork of awareness. Um, it is helping people get to know that you exist and that your books exist. So that's very different from the promotion activities which are very much about please buy my book. So you can't say please buy my book before people have gotten to know you. So and they get to know you through your marketing efforts. So that's a distinction that I think is is important and um, I think is interesting as you go through your 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 thinking about how you're gonna market your book okay so I said we were gonna spend most of the time on the market scan now where's my notes because I wanted to make sure yeah the market scan um, the market scan and the market environment which is coming up in just a second but so the the market scan um, in the traditional sense it's it's quite direct uh, linkages and what I mean by that is uh, you'll be looking at things like your um, 
uh, yeah, here we are, your, your genre. You'll be digging into uh, what's happening in your specific genre. You're going to be looking at um, other authors in the space, in particular the successful ones, the ones that are selling at the level that, you know, pie in the sky dreaming, let's, you know, go, go hard or go home, what we used to say. Um, you want to look at how, you know, all of the elements around how your genre is selling. For example, you know, we know that romance is, is a good good uh, good selling um, genre romance readers tend to gobble books up some of them reading two and three books a week um, so so whatever your genre is do some research and there's you know places you can find on Statista and and uh, good uh, business sites IBIS world IBIS world although you need a subscription for t to get too deep into it but you can find out how your genre is selling and how it stacks up and that's good I find for orientation around you know where, where does my book fit so we'll talk about that in a minute you also want to do some research around formats so your the formats that you're producing your book in should be connected to who your reader is and how they prefer to read uh, and not just that everybody says you should do audio maybe your Target audience doesn't do audio. I'll be surprised. That's not a very good example. But um, so do some research into formats. You want to look at um, all of the covers of competing books in in your genre and subgenre. What do they look like? What does the reader expect? Uh, and then you want to look at the broader environment. And this is where I think it's really fun and the rubber starts to hit the road. So the market scan is quite specific and direct around the book. Uh, the genre and the, and the industry and, and the activity of reading and what I want you to think about now is the broader environment and what opportunities there might be for you and your book to market your book and to get the word out when you start to look at that broader environment and here's kinda what I mean by that so when you look at the broader environment your making yourself aware of the broader forces that are at work on your reader. You, it'll help you discover why readers will want to buy your book, why they might want to buy it now, um, and it'll help you find opportunities for you to get in front of the reader that you might not have thought of had you not done this piece of work. And it'll also help you see what else is happening out there in the big wide world that could impact your book's success. So how how do you go about doing this? Uh, you are, um, first of all, you're going to look at, uh, I'm going to go back here just a second, sorry, no. So you're going to look at um, socioeconomic factors. So specifically for nonfiction books, and this, I think this, I, I know this applies for, for fiction as well, but let me just talk you through the, the nonfiction side. So for um, uh, nonfiction, there are you know, all kinds of things going on in current events that um, could affect a reader's desire um, to read your book right now. So uh, let's take an example from you know, one of my many work in progresses that you know, I got a few chapters written and there it sits languishing in my in, in, in my undone box, but there was in Canada um, and parts of the U.S. there's been quite a public debate around the uh, issue of pipelines and getting oil, you know, the, the bitumen that's produced in Alberta and other uh, oil sands, getting that to market. And uh, rail cars uh, is costly, there are, you know, derailings and environmental contaminants and so there's the faction that wants to produce uh, build pipelines they think it's safer and there's all you know the First Nations groups are all up in arms and so there's been this huge debate um, and I have a journalism background and so I started writing a mystery series that had a investigative reporter um, in the middle of some you know international intrigue around pipelines and sabotage and you know payoffs and all of this kind of stuff so so when that book is finished, um, depending on what's happening with that pipeline debate, when it's finished, um, there are going to be avenues for me to connect with people who are actually involved in those debates. So the pro-pipeline factions, the First Nation groups, the um, the uh, the anti-pipeline, obviously the environmental groups. So 
I would be able to take a look at who those people are, um, the leaders, the movers and shakers, and find ways to get my book in front of them, you know, whether it's through sending a direct email, making a pitch, um, that sort of thing. So that, that's, that's kind of what, uh, what I'm talking about, you know, socioeconomically, um, taking a look at what's happening in the world and where your book fits with it. So how do you do that? So you take a look inside your book and, uh, and this is, this works totally for fiction as well as nonfiction and nonfiction might be more obvious because if you write a nonfiction book about how to recover from opioid addiction, obviously you're going to be looking for people who treat, um, addicts. You're going to be looking for suicide recovery, uh, suicide helplines. You're going to be look, I don't know, suicide or whatever, but you're going to be looking for, uh, the, the folks in the pharmaceutical industry. You're going to be looking for folks in the legal system because there are court cases, um, going on about, uh, you know, class action suits suing the pharmaceutical companies that have produced the opioids. So that's kind of, perhaps more obvious for a nonfiction book, but even if it's a fiction book, so go through your, think about what's inside your book for fiction. What are some of the topics or subjects? So fiction is just a smorgasbord of opportunities. Um, think about, you know, do you, does your, what is your character's profession? Um, is there, is there a, a police force? Is it a, you know, espionage? Is it, is it, uh, you know, what topics or subjects that you've, you've got in your book, events, uh, you know, circumstances, think about your character flaws and the character journey. So do you have a character that suffers from Tourette's syndrome or, which is not a character flaw, it's a medical situation, but you, you, you know what I mean? And then where's your book set? Um, think about where, you know, where your book is set and that could bring marketing opportunities for, uh, for that location or in close to that location what are there events that you're describing in your in your uh in your fiction book are they tied to reality are they similar to reality and you want to be a little bit careful there because often we create um events that are based on something that happened factually but we state very clearly that it's fictionalized so you want to just be cognizant that you're not then creating a connection that you inadvertently have been trying to steer away from um, but and what are some of the other circumstances inside your book that have a real connection to something in real life outside the book that you can connect to so let's say um, let's say your your character has some sort of mental illness or is struggling to recover from, I don't know, domestic abuse as a kid. Well, there are organizations and groups out there who deal with these, who deal with this stuff in real life. Um, reach them, tell them about your book, offer to come and speak at their groups in the course of your research on writing about a character who is dealing with these issues, you have probably come to some pretty interesting insight. And um, I bet that there would be um, people dealing with those issues in real life that would love to hear from an author uh, talk about their journey with doing the research, their, their connection to uh, some of those character flaws. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. And um, here's a here's a little bit of an example um, from uh, Flying with Dad by Yvonne Caputo. She's an author that I've been working with for for a while on her book. It's we're just about ready to uh, publish. It'll be published uh, very shortly this fall. But this isn't the, on the left is an e excerpt from the back cover copy. Flying with Dad is the true story of a daughter, a father, and how his stories of World War II bridge that bridge their worlds. Uh, worlds. As a father, Michael Caputo could be distant and brusque. Growing up, Yvonne and her siblings had a roof over their heads and food on the table, but Yvonne wanted a deeper connection with her dad. Yvonne charts her journey to her father through the retelling of why he went from repairing to flying planes, how heavy German flak led to post-war nightmares, and why he suffered guilt over one particular bombing run. So Yvonne's is a memoir, but it has it has fictional it has a fictional feel. Um, but the point is, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, as much of an insight as I can uh, in this short time period about what's 
included in the book. So first of all, when Yvonne's doing this work, and she has done this work, and I've worked with her obviously doing this work, but uh, obviously World War II is a connection. Obviously uh, B-24 bombers, because that's the airplane that her father was a navigator in. Um, so Yvonne has done all kinds of research. I think she's got something like 327 um, museums and organizations related to um, World War II history, in particular bomb groups, and and specifically some of those are specific to B-24. Um, her father was stationed at Rakheath, England, so she has gone everywhere around Rakheath. She's contacted all of the media organizations, the community, the um, obviously the World War II connections there as well. But the other thing, so that's the obvious part, and when Yvonne came to me, she was all like, yep, my book is all about World War II, but it is about so much more than that. Yvonne's story is also about relationship tensions between a girl and her dad. It's about how she learned to approach her father and their relationship differently. It's about how she changed her position from, you know, being entrenched and thinking that her father was doing, you know, she wished he would be different. Well, she came to accept that he wasn't different. She changed how she approached him. So so it's very much a relationship story. So this, this book has two very distinct um, opportunities for marketing. So Yvonne is also reaching out to people like Renee Brown, um, psychologists who have a good public following who go around and, and uh, uh, speak. And, you know, Yvonne is working to get her book in front of some of those people who are influencers in that other um, audience section, if you like. So, yes, World War II, but also relationship, interpersonal dynamics, um, all of those kinds of things. So that's the sort of, and that's that's still quite general, but uh, that gives you the idea that what's obvious might not be the only opportunity for you in, in marketing your book. Okay, so talking about the readers, we, of course we know we have to identify who our, who our readers are, and that's critically important. But I want to suggest to you that uh, finding, um, new ways to market your book has more to it is about more than just who your readers are and um i want to challenge you to take a look at who your readers are once you've done the detailed work and again in one million readers there's a whole chapter on how to identify your readers if you if you're not clear on that um once you've identified your readers then i want you to take it a step further oh, there we go i want you to think about why your readers will read your book. I'm just going to sip a coffee for a second here. So once you know who your reader is, then you can then you can connect the reader to your book and say, why are they going to read my book now? What journey are they on? Where, you know, what forest are they walking through? What's their what's happening in their in their life, what are they looking for when they're picking up my book? Um, are they looking for results? Are they looking for tools and tips and tricks? Are they looking uh, for a window into some other experiences that they might be able to apply to their life? Are they looking for entertainment? Are they looking for escape? Um, so think about, and if this is a little too esoteric for you, Think about your own book buying and book selection process and, you know, use mindfulness and, and when you're thinking about what your next uh, book purchase is, um, think about, try to connect to your own why. Why am I picking up this book at this time? What is the, what is the thing that I am after? And that will help you think about what your reader is after, which is also then potentially going to reveal um, some new ideas for how you market your book. This will for sure affect your marketing copy, your promotional copy, your back cover copy, uh, because you want to make sure that you are actually connecting with the reason that the reader wants to um, 
by your book. Now this is all leading me to, isn't he cute? I just loved this picture. But so the main thing through why a reader wants to buy your book, it is all about a feeling. Um, if we go back here, if they're looking for results, the feeling is going to be one of accomplishment. Uh, if they're looking for tools, the feeling is going to be one of, you know, joy at having learned something new or, or something. It, it, you know, if they're looking for new experiences, the feeling is going to be, um, you know, I don't know, one of broadening horizons. If they're looking for entertainment, you know, it's so, so the thing you're looking for to connect with your readers is not just, you know, trans, it's not transactional. Remember that it is an emotional thing, whether it's, you know, joy and celebratory or whether it's, you know, something deeper. Maybe they want to be terrified if you, you write uh, horror or thriller or, you know, fantasy. They want escapism there, you know, but that, so what's the feeling and make sure that you, um, are aware enough of what that is so that you can make sure to connect that very clearly because once a reader feels like, and they, they may not necessarily be aware, but if you can make them, um, make them feel the feeling that they're looking for when they first see your book and that copy, that is going to uh, be really helpful. Now, some, what I'm talking about here is let's just take an example of two different kinds of books and the back cover copy. So understanding what that feeling is. And you're probably doing this a little bit uh, now anyway, um, but I just wanted to put an emphasis on understanding that you're connecting to that feeling. Um, so we have a romance book on one side, let's say, and a, I, I guess I'll take a, a, a thriller. Uh, so the romance book is going to use language that, you know, people that read romance novels are interested in, you know, feeling the happiness of a happy ending, feeling the thrill of, you know, a romantic or, you know, a a love connection. They want to, you know, be stimulated in that way. So your language is that you use and, and your images, everything is going to point towards creating a, a connection to that feeling that they're looking for. The reader that's looking at a thriller is totally different. They're looking for, you know, intrigue. They want their heart to race for a different reason than the romantic readers want their heart to race. Um, but so you're going to use adventure language and intrigue and, and those kinds of things. So everything you do about the packaging of your book is really about connecting to the feeling that the reader is after, um, which is the reason that they're looking and will buy your book in the first place. Okay, so I promised to explain why I spent so much time talking about my grade five reading experience and my uh, background and um, there was a fabulous session at Digital Book World. Um, I'm still in Nashville, actually, as I'm recording this now. Um, but uh, Noelle LaCherity Le from the AI Leadership Institute was my favorite presentation of the whole conference. But she <clears throat> stood up at the start of her keynote and proceeded to you know, show us pictures of her family. She has four kids, and her father lives with them. She's a sandwich generation. She talked about her father's um, he was hit by a car as a pedestrian a few years ago, lost his ability to read. She talked about how AI um, has helped him because she got Alexa home and he can now, you know, through Alexa, he can read, having, you know, choose books that are that are read to him. Um, and she, she then linked it to a phenomenon that we really want to pay attention to, and that is that readers want to know the authors whose stories they read. They want to really know them. So if you want to find new ways to market your book, look at how you're positioning you yourself as an author. Let your readers get to know you, the real you. Maybe it's a podcast where you talk about your own personal journey with the book. You know, reveal your struggles, fears, be vulnerable. Um, this was my story about my grade five failing grade on my story that I thought was so great. I was being vulnerable um, for you. Now, you know, sometimes people go, blah, that's horrible. But most of the time that creates a connection. You know, people can connect when they've, when they've, 
hear about the vulnerability stories of other people. We've all been in situations where we, you know, wanted something to happen and it didn't work out the way we want. So share your writing journey, share, you know, the, the, your research journey, share the doubts and the, you know, the, how many times you started over, um, how you came up with the, the storyline, you know, share all of that stuff in this, in, 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 in short, let them inside your world, let them get to know who you really are. Um, and readers will respond. So that is, um, the presentation today. And as, uh, mentioned, um, all of this and much more can be found in uh, One Million Readers, The Definitive Guide to a Nonfiction Book Marketing Strategy that Saves Time, Money, and Sells More Books. Um, so uh, my, this One Million Readers goes through how to do everything on that um, outline of what's in a book marketing strategy that I showed you at the beginning. And this is a link where you can find more about it. It's also available on all your uh, favorite uh, book buying, ebook, and and print available pretty much anywhere you can get it. And there is an audio book coming um, that should be out in the next six weeks or so. Um, and I wish to thank you very much for your time. And um, good luck with winning one of the physical, the one physical copy book that I'm going to ship out to some lucky person and uh, the five free ebooks. So don't forget to tweet. And do what you're supposed to do to make sure that you're eligible for the draw. And um, again, I'm Bonnie Wagner Stafford, Ally Communications Manager, and um, looking forward to you having a great day and good luck with selling more books. <laughs>